We kickstarted Sentinels of Earth Prime because we were big Sentinels of the Multiverse fans. Greater Than Games and Green Ronin Publishing did a collaboration to bring us a combination of Sentinels of the Multiverse and Mutants and Masterminds RPG. So we have the characters here from Mutants and Masterminds in Sentinels of the Multiverse's rule structure and game format. We are going to do an unboxing and check out what it looks like. I have my sharp implement for getting through this plastic very carefully without wrecking my box. I hope. Yeah. We have our official rule book. Some very interesting tokens. Damage dealt immune, all damage equals fire. That's exciting. And some health counters. All right, first, it looks like we have maybe our card splitters. All right, so it looks like we have a difficulty ranking for each of the villains, three, two, one and the same for probably the complication style of each hero. One, two, three. And then we have our environment cards. Can you shut up? Then we have our oversized villain cards. Pop these open. They should also have their difficulty listed. Yeah. On this side. So Lord of the Terminus, he is a three level difficulty. <laughs> the cat's contributing to the conversation. These cards will tell you what the boss setup is what their steps are during gameplay, and what their advanced mode is. These will be our environment cards. Looks like there might be maybe all of them in this package. <laughs> so we have four different environment decks, the Terminus, Tartarus, Freedom City, and Farside City. And each of our hero decks, Star Knight, Siren, The Raven, Pseudo, and Lady Liberty. This side. Dr. Metropolis, Daedalus, all right, all right, Captain Thunder and Bowman, and Johnny Rocket. So these remaining ones here should be our villains. Let's get these guys out of the way. Hades, Argo, the ultimate android, Omega and Metamind. So we have all of our nice cards and these little foamy things. All of the characters fit on one side and the environments and bad guys on the other, but there is no room easily for the tokens to fit in this box. Now, the way that this has been designed, this also isn't easy to pull out and put back in. So I think what I'm going to do is I am going to cut this here 
and then I flip it and it's a tray. So that'll be easier for storage. Um, putting this back in and out, that's gonna wreck my box and I really, I'm not, not impressed, don't love that part. into the box noises. I'll do that on a separate video. So the Kickstarter version came with all four of the mini expansions. We have two heroes. One is Eldritch and one is Lantern Jack. And then we have a mini villain expansion. Malador the Mystic. Very good. And then Subterra is the environment. There's no room on the hero side for two more heroes. All right, so that's the box components. We'll go through the heroes and take a look at what their cards are like. The rule book has a great backstory for each character. So if you're interested in that, go through your rule book. Each of the characters will have two options for which power card you use. Some of them have different HP, they'll each have different art. So depending on the play style that you like or the bosses that you pick or your group composition, you may want to choose one or the other. The Raven does damage, um, does some deck control, plays with gadgets, which can destroy equipment or get stuff out of her trash. There's a lot of draw cards play a cards, destroy cards, and those tactic cards will change up. Um, it looks like she's got quite a few. When she uses a power or deals damage, sometimes she'll destroy a tactic, so you'll want to get a few of those out into play if you can. The Siren has some healing powers, but her main effects are weather effects. And it looks like you can play multiple of those. She'll have some cards that destroy them in order to do certain things like preventing damage or preventing healing. And then she's got one shots that complement that and act as a support to her teammates. Looks like she also has an ongoing that makes hero damage immune to damage dealt by her. So that would probably be a good one to get into play if destroying a weather effect is going to damage every target. I am a fan of the artwork. It's very colorful, comic book style, right on the nose. Star Knight here is truly about deck control. There's a ton of cards that are moving cards from the trash to the bottom of the deck, discarding cards, using a power to discard cards and then draw up cards. So you want to be milling through the deck, getting your equipment in and out of the trash. That seems to be the main focus for sure. And then damage reduction. Pseudo is about shapes and you can only have one in play at a time. Each one deals damage or reduces damage that you take, um, makes you immune to certain types of damages. So depending on what's going on in the fight, you'll want to get the different shapes into play. Once you put a new one out, it destroys each other one. There's some villain deck control cards and allowing you to draw and discard cards. Next up, we have Lady Liberty. She has a lot of cards that when they come into play, they heal or allow other players to play cards, uh, increase her damage or decrease damage dealt. So she deals a lot of radiant damage and 
buffs the team quite a bit. It would be interesting to see a game uh, where her and Legacy team up and get the team support going on. So normal Sentinels and Earth Prime are compatible to play together. Definitive Edition just has some changes to rules and verbiage and stuff, so you may need to just keep the rule book for Earth Prime handy. Johnny Rocket is all about momentum. You get momentum cards, sometimes they give you buffs, sometimes you destroy them in order to do things. It looks like he deals quite a bit of sonic damage and likes to draw cards and play cards. Also has a card that allows other players to search their deck for equipment cards. Dr. Metropolis looks suspiciously like a villain from another game and I don't trust him. Another game, another you know, comic book series. He deals with locations and environments. So there's some that heal up locations and each locations will have a different effect that he puts into place. Uh, he does stuff when environment cards are destroyed. It looks like these location cards really work like minions. They'll sort of damage themselves in order to deal other effects and then he can heal them up or destroy them. Daedalus has an interesting deck control mechanic going on here. Um, he draws cards and discards cards, and he has a bunch of equipment that if he has more than seven cards in his hands, he deals himself damage and then destroys that piece of equipment. So there'll be a lot of control of how many cards that you have and which equipment that you're putting into play if you have too many cards. He is a Complication 3 hero, so if you haven't played Sentinels of the Multiverse, I would suggest starting with a 1 to learn the rules and the mechanics before you try using some of the more difficult heroes. Captain Thunder, as one might expect from the name, deals a lot of lightning damage, um, does some preventing damage to other heroes, making himself immune, dealing multiple targets damage. He does have a card that directs damage dealt by non-hero targets to himself, so that would make his immunity extremely useful. And there's a couple of other ongoings and one-shots again. Damage, card discards, healing. Bowman is all about arrows. He has some cards that allows him to get them back from the trash, some bonuses that he gets once he discards an arrow, and some cards that lets him play multiple, and each of them do different things. We've got uh, dealing damage to targets makes the next damage dealt to them irreducible. There's one here that's a fire AoE. Um, he's got an ongoing that increases the next damage he deals by two, so these will work together in order to increase the damage and field control. Lantern Jack is interesting. He has a bunch of abilities that deal radiant damage and then heal himself, even if he's at max HP. And then he can destroy opponent ongoings, but if he's above his max HP, it'll deal damage to him to himself. So that's just an interesting, different mechanic. Um, most of his abilities are just dealing damage, making targets deal itself damage, and uh, healing. Healing up above his max HP is a lot on these cards. Jack and Eldritch are level 3 heroes. Eldritch has spells and tokens, so you have to keep track. Certain spells will have tokens added to them, and then when you remove them, they do things. Doing tokens, destroying environment cards, preventing damage. Quite a few different spells and relics that will deal damage and add and remove tokens. 
never played Mutants and Masterminds, but I'm familiar with a lot of different comics, um, and I am a big fan of the variety of types of characters and their backstories. So it's always cool to meet some new characters. Omega is the Lord of the Terminus villain. In order to start the game, he starts with H minus two minions and H minus two breaches. So those will be his two mechanics. His card flips based on how many breaches and villain targets are in place. So watch for that. And then you do want to make sure that you are finding a way to destroy those breaches. Metamind starts off as a Gru mothership and starts with one Gru in play. Gru has a different effect, increasing damage dealt by, visit, by villain targets, dealing the highest or lowest HP damage. So you need to control all of his minions while still whittling damage down on the main dude. Uh, looks like this one's gonna be a tough one. Bring some healing. Hades starts Diabolical Dealmaker side up and plays Spirits and Soul Packs. Soul Packs get played on a hero play area and does stuff depending on the pact and then deals damage when they get destroyed. He has a number of one shots that deals damage. Um, he deals mostly infernal damage and just keeps pumping out these little spirit cards to help whittle the heroes down. It looks like if the soul packs are destroyed, he will play a card. So you may want to keep one out and just manage it. Argo plays imprints, and it looks like if there are none in play, your hero ongoing or equipment cards get destroyed. So it's another one that you'll have to manage which ones are out. Many of the imprints also have a weakness on the bottom. For example, Argo deals each villain target one melee damage and one player may use one power now. So those ones that are giving heroes benefits, maybe the ones you wanna try and focus on keeping alive if they're not dealing too much damage that it's uncontrollable. So Maladar has this golden mask that will have tokens put on and tokens removed and that will control when he flips and what happens with the mask. So keep an eye on those token counts. He has a number of spells, cantrips and summons, all that will be dealing damage, adding and removing tokens and having control over what that mask is doing three difficulty and there's a lot of tracking so just pay attention to what's printed on his card because it will give you directions for all of the different things that he's doing. The Terminus has a number of breaches and weather effects so pay attention if you're playing Siren or Omega. It also has devices, minions, and drudges all with various effects that you'll have to manage while the boss effects are also going on. Tartarus's Hades home base filled with spirits uh, and torment cards. The spirit cards are typically dealing all non-spirit targets damage, so it may not hit the heroes if there are other target types available. Most of the torments will be destroyed when another torment comes out. There is one exception to that rule in here. Other than that, it is just damages. Subterra is full of Lemurians and Morlocks, so watch for them. There is a lot of uh, indiscriminate dealing non-hero targets damage, as well as damage reductions to villains, so you'll want to destroy those when they come out. Freedom City has headlines and locations. The locations can take damage. There's some benefits and some negatives depending on the card. There's a lot of getting players to draw cards or discard cards and reducing damage done or increasing damage dealt by villain targets. Farside City has weather effects, preserver artifacts, and minions. The preserver artifacts are indestructible, so you can deal damage to them until they're 
at zero health, but they stay in play. But when they have zero or fewer HP, they deal damage out. So you actually want to be healing these so that you're getting the positive effect. And that's the box. Join us next time and we will test out an actual playthrough with some of these characters and villains. If you like our content, don't forget to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. See you next time.